Item number SCP-6295, Object Class, Keta. Special Containment Procedures. All books containing instances of SCP-6295 should be removed from circulation with amnestics distributed to any readers as appropriate. Research into commonalities between SCP-6295 manifestations and possible methods to prevent instances from appearing in newly published stories is ongoing. Description SCP-6295 is an anomalous phenomenon associated with the serpent's hand that manifests as a supernatural snake of varying species appearing within the work of fiction. Multi-universal analysis has determined that SCP-6295 typically manifests in works of fiction in which a snake already appears, hijacking the plot and text in order to aid the serpent's hand. Any subject who reads a work of fiction in which SCP-6295 appears will invariably be approached by a member of the serpent's hand. Hereafter, SCP-6295-A, within 72 hours of completing the work, provided that the following criteria are met. The person believes in the existence of supernatural phenomena. The person's psychological profile is that they would not attack or otherwise show hostility to supernatural entities present within the wondrous library. The person is unhappy with their life and desires a change to it. Once approached, SCP-6295-A will ask the subject if they are interested in visiting the wondrous library. If they reply in the affirmative, the nearest door will be opened by SCP-6295-A, and both it and the subject will walk through the door and enter the library. Owing to the ease and frequency with which ordinary civilians would access the anomalous world if SCP-6295 is left uncontained, its containment is a high priority. Addendum C-295A Example of SCP-6295 Infected Literature The following excerpt is provided as an example of SCP-6295 Infection. It has been examined and determined to be non-anomalous and clear of SCP-6295 infection by SCP-6295 researchers. Work, The Rover Boy Shipwrecked by Arthur M. Winfield, 1924. Estimated interference begins on page 189, infected text in italics. The three rovers were alarmed, and with good reason. Such a snake at liberty on the deck of the waterlogged steam yacht would be a constant source of danger. Are you sure you saw him, Randy? Questioned Jack. Positive, was the ready reply. Gee, but he was a big one too. Maybe we'd better warn the others, broke in Fred. That snake may go right after Andy or Small if they happen to be down on the deck. I'm going out. Snake or no snake, came from a young major. Wait, let's get those hatches and axes we saw back there, cried Fred, and ran back to return a minute later with two axes and a fear-sized hatchet. Carrying these weapons ready for use, the three Rover boys mounted the runway cautiously. At first, they saw nothing on the deck. Then Fred pointed excitedly to the wreckage at the bow. There he is, he cried. There, he goes under those boards. What are you yelling about? came from Andy. He and a lanky sailor were still resting on top of the cabin. It's a big snake, answered Jack. He got loose and just came up a runway. There are a whole lot of them down below and a big wire cage. If we only had guns, we could take a shot at that snake, exclaimed Randy. I'm sure we could soon blow him to pieces. I'm going to take a shot at another kind exclaimed Fred, and aiming as carefully as he could, he threw the hatchet with all the force he could command. It was a light and sharp affair, and as the bright steel circled through the air, the boy saw the snake stare at the hatchet, and somehow caused it to stop where it was right in the middle of the air. It fell to the ground, 
with a thud as the Rover Boys stared at the snake in shock. I am sorry to frighten you, the snake said. It's talking, Jack exclaimed. What's going on? There is no need to be afraid. I've come to deliver a message. What kind of message? The boys don't know what to think. But Mandy decided he wanted to hear what the snake had to say. Your story. It is a beautiful one. But there are many like it. You're not making any sense. You will find out if you wish. The snake's eyes glowed a bright yellow for a moment, and the air above the ship became away from there. The three Rover Boys decided it was time to visit the library. Additional text is restricted to level 3 researchers.